Now, what I'm going to try and do is give an overview because there's rather a lot of species um, being of invertebrate being recorded on the moss. I did ask um, Pete Baldwin, and he said um, 2,000 to 2,500 species. Um, so obviously, I can't cover everything. And, and this is a virtual year. It's not a particular year. It's, it's really several years rolled into one. And I'll sort of go off month by month or to start off with in, in, in double months. Very much from the point of view of um, someone visiting the moss and what they're likely to see at that particular time of the, time of the year. And obviously it's edited highlights. So we'll start off. A lot of people already see, seem familiar with Fens and Wixel moss. That um, it's um, the third biggest lowland raised mire in the country. Um, Fawn and Hatfield moors being being the largest um, to uh, lowland raised mires. So it's uh, and anyone that's been there knows it's a pretty massive open space. Um, here I'm just going through the the, the tour is um, aiming to to go over species found over uh, on the moss right highlighted species each month some of the common species you get on lots of sites another ones obviously specialist species like the white faced data you see here um, now I'll start up because. I'm going to skip over December and January. There are species around. I mean, I have guided a few um, surveys around in January. There was one where we were looking for the mud snail, um, Omphascola um, glabra, and uh, another one for the Shropshire um, spider <coughs> survey. Might have been um, in, in the beginning of um, February looking for Glycephesis cockney. And I know that um, Charlie Bell and... Um, Jerry Thomas have been doing springtail surveys. So there are invertebrates around. You see the odd flying insect during, uh, during these months. And I did once get this um, peacock butterfly on the 29th of December. <laughs> so we'll, we'll skip over and we'll start off with February and March. Now, wherever things start in March depends a lot on, uh, sorry, in February depends a lot on the year. If you get a warm day in February, you can get um, brimstone butterflies around. This this photograph was actually taken in February. We had quite a uh, a warm February day. I think it was about 16 degrees or something. Um, th this year just gone in 2020. But other years it can be quite a wintry month, so nothing's really beginning till then. Um, but anyway, uh, brimstone butterflies are usually the first. Um, what's it butterfly you'll see on the moth commas sometimes around around the same time um, and in March the first mining bees um, appear Clark's mining bee and Andrina Clark Heller um, these uh, um, funny enough they'd not been recorded on the moss before it's I'm not an expert on bees but this was one uh, species I was familiar with you tend to find them on upturned tree um, stumps, you know, where, where the trees fall when and you have all the muddy base. Um, and also, um, this is a male here, the one was a female. And I've also found uh, their cuckoo bee associated with, with them, which is uh, no matter, I don't know, Luco, Luco Falama. <laughs> um, but you... Um, it's still fairly quiet at this time of the year, and in that thing, you do get these orange underwing moths around. When I first started these, um, seeing these, it took me quite a, quite a bit before I actually managed to find one and, and, and confirm what it was, because they look a bit like um, small coppers in flight. Um, and you do get comma butterflies in March, but again, March is quite a variable month. It can be quite winterous. So, you, so um, there can be not too much about, and it's, um, you know, the odd peacock butterfly and that, but it's really April when, when, when things start going, um, because the orange underwing moss, while you get the odd one in March, April's the main month for them, um, and they're one of the first noticeable um, 
flying invertebrates you'll see see around the moss along with um these these little fellas um these tachinid flies tachinid asina i see quite a lot of them around you tend to find them basking in little sun spots um I'm not too much uh, too sure about what the host, you know, what um, species the parasitoids on or that. But all I know is that I see them around in April. And also April is when you tend to see the first rat spiders um, standing on the water. I have been around with people doing surveys in the winter and I know you do find them then. But the first time you, you'll see them is, is probably April, um, if you look out. This, this one's got a ground topper. I knew, I knew it was an olfactor, and I didn't know what it was till um, the Shropshire County recorder told me. And um, the, uh, normally the first Odin and Arton to come out are large red damselflies. Um, uh, you can see this is a ten or one from the shiny wings. Um, they, I think it's normally about 16th of April, something around then, you'll start seeing them. And um, the, the next one are normally four spotted chaser dragonflies. They'll come out a few days later, about the 20th. And then um, lately, this photograph here was taken on the 25th of April, and I got the first uh, earliest ever record. Or 2019, and that was the 22nd of April. Um, um, the first ever, um, earliest ever record in the UK. And um, this is a male here. They, they, um, they, they don't develop the red till later on. These yellowy gold um, parts of them um, go red later on. And this year, I, I saw one on, um, on the 21st of April, but I don't think the the uh, county recorders accepted it because I said I was just looking out from the underside of a leaf. But then I, I got five of them on the 22nd of April. So it's probably a climate change thing that they're, they're coming out earlier. Um, and you start getting um, uh, emperor moths around in April. Um, since I've been using the, the, the pheromone lures, I've been seeing a lot more of them. And it's, it's quite amazing because if you've had them in your pocket, e even two weeks later, you'll still get, uh, you know, male emperor moths um, visiting you. Um, and to tell the truth, before um, using it, I'd only ever seen about three definite ones in my life. Um, but now often uh, when I'm doing the, the butterfly transects, um, <laughs> I've got a whole um, host of them following me around. <laughs> Um, sm small tortoise shells as well. They, they they tend to be a bit variable from year to year. Or, orange tip butterflies as well. Um, so April is the month where most things are, are just beginning. But most of the species that start emerging in in um, in April don't really come out in force till May. So you know uh, most of the odonatans that you know the. the um, large red damsel flies, the white faced darters. Sometimes the white faced darters don't emerge till what the first week or two of, of May. It depends on what the weather's like. Um, and but the population really starts building up then. Same with four spotted chasers. Um, I got this photo of one uh, emerging this year. It's the first time I got a, a good photo of them. And there's a few pools where you can consistently see them emerging. And um, so I was surprised quite how transparent this one was. Um, the, I've got a male and a female here, so you can see what the animals are like. I, I assume most people are probably familiar with them anyway. Um, but these are, are really the sort of a speciality species for the moss. Um, probably one of the most significant species you get there with um there are, there's only really was three main breeding sites outside um scotland they've now got reintroduced to delamere forest and uh, a couple of sites in uh, in uh, cumbria 
but um, it's nearly the most southern site. They used to be on Fursley Common in um, Surrey, but I think they di it died out in the early 2000s. And Chartley Moss is slightly further south. Um, there's a mating pair there. Four spotted chasers are probably the most numerous um, dragonfly you get around there, although it's surprising just how numerous white-faced darters are now, and they're found all across the moss, not just um, in a few spaces, also on Bettersfield moss. Um, Broad-bodied chasers technically come out, but you don't tend to get those on the moss, they're around the edge, there's a few pools that have been created where they have occurred on but um, this one was on the Marlot, which is, if anyone is, is familiar with the moss, when you come in through Brownthorn Bridge, um, there's this little area, it's the parish council own it and um, all run it. And it basically, it's a series of marl pits because that's where they used to dig the marl out to put on the fields. Because um, most of the, the, the moss is quite acidic and whereas this is quite, uh, you know, um, uh, base rich and more a fen type um, uh, what's it habitat um, in May this is when you start seeing the the fully mature female raft spiders um, and they can be you know that they're, they're our biggest spider you know nearly a three inch leg span one inch body and the females tend to have this very enlarged you know uh, body where presumably this is where all their eggs are. I've actually found quite a lot about um, uh, rat spider behavior and I've corresponded with Helen Smith about it because she's more um, familiar with Dolomedes plantarius than um, Rembriatus. Um, the gr green hair streak butterflies are another speciality. You'll tend to see those around in um, uh they, become, they, they come out sort of late April, but you just see in one or two, and they're only more noticeable in, um, well, it's, it's in May. You'll see them resting on birch leaves and that. And um, while they, they, these are not obviously uh, moss species, um, uh, but um, you do actually find quite a lot of demoiselles on the, uh, on the, um, on the moss. One of the more unusual ones that have been appearing is beautiful demoiselles. And it's a bit of a mystery because really these are insects of fast flowing gravelly bottom streams. And yet I've been, been consistently seeing them on the moss. And I managed to work out what's going on. The, the um, Fens and Wixel moss is uh, basically the um, source of the River Roden, which flows into the River Turn and then into the Severn. And I think what it is, is um, further down, it's, it's an ideal stream. And like lots of freshwater invertebrates, they tend to move upstream. And I think you're getting them coming up into the, um, uh, the, uh, the drains on the moss and then emerging from there. I mean, I have seen them actually on territory on so, some of the um, and three different males on territory on one of the drains. Um, the emperor moss now are, are quite numerous. It's probably the peak time for them. Um, you, you do get the odd female coming to light traps, but um, obviously with, with pheromone lures, you only see the males. And um, I don't know if people are probably familiar this, with this argent and sable. It's one of the nationally scarce moss that's um, the, the um, Fens and Wixel moss is quite um, uh, well known for. Um, butterfly conservation have been monitoring them and I've been around with George Tord off um, doing some surveys for them. You tend to get these the, um, in wooded rides where you've got a line of trees either side. Um, th there's only about four five spots are on the main body of Fens and Wixel moss where you um, tend to get them. They emerge in, um, in, in later May, but really June is, is, is the peak time for them. Um, anyone visiting there, a particularly good place is um, when you come up from Morris's Bridge car park, which is the main car park there, you come up to the gate, uh, which is the entrance to the moss, and then there's an avenue of trees. And in that one, it's probably your best, best spot for seeing them. 
Um, and then and then we're sort of um, coming into June now. While uh, large heat butterflies do tend to um, uh, emerge in, um, in, in late May, June is the best time if you want to see them. I found they're quite variable from year to year in the, the population of, um, of, of, of large heat butterflies. Um, so um, the, 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 um, this is the period they're out, the flight time. Sometimes, like in 2018, when we had that hot summer, they were over with before the end of June. They all came out suddenly. Whereas over years, they tend to come out more slowly. And so they'll carry on emerging, you know, through till July. Um, and that, anyone visiting to see the signature species of um, uh, large heat butterflies and white-faced darters sort of mid-Junes are quite, uh, probably uh, the most predictable time to see them. Um, the, the, there's a... Um, it's subspecies Davos, the um, species on the on the moss, and they have these um, the more um, what's it eyes on the wing than the um, Scottish subspecies Scotica. This is probably the best photo of uh, managed to get of one. They're notoriously difficult to photograph these uh, because they tend to fly off over the moss or, or, or rarely settle. I think this is a female actually. Um, June is, as I say, when you see mo most of the argent and sable around. Um, it's funny because until um, Pete Bowyer um, showed me and Mike Sokolowski doing one of the you started um, butterfly transects, they were only getting one or two records a, a year for the species. And um, we got something like 70, 80 species, e uh, individuals each in, in, in the first season. And we've seen up to 14 on doing transects. So um, they are more numerous than you think, but only in, in these set places. They seem to be very, very um, um, particular about having a bit of shelter because when they cut down one line of trees on one ride where you were seeing them a lot and it exposed them to the wind, I haven't, I've only seen one on there in the last three years since then. So... Um, these are another river species. You get them in in, in, in the canal, actually, the Langolan Canal, white-faced, uh, also white-legged um, damselflies. They're very numerous, and I've done a few surveys up and down the canal, and they're literally everywhere on the Langolan Canal. And so I mentioned the Marlock before, and you get the best times probably... Um, early June, and you will get huge amounts of tenorals in there, I mean, hundreds of them. Um, resting in there and the, um, as most people know um, uh, damselflies and dragonflies they, they hatch out when they're still in the tenoral immature form they, they fly away to some long sheltered vegetation and the marlot seems to be the place for that but you do see them all around the moss as well um, and then you get the, the blue damselflies, common blues you tend to get on the big open pools and um, as you're on the, um, on the more vegetated pools. Now, Pete Boardman did um, find um, variable damselflies, but I've been looking for um, quite a bit and I have not found uh, any at all. Um, and as I say, broad-bodied chasers, you do get them on the marlot and you get them on some of the pools at the edge of the moss, but um, they're not really um, a, a species of the open moss. Now, this is one of the um, nationally scarce moss, the uh, purple bordered gold. Right? Um, the, June's probably the peak time for them. They're a, Quite, quite a spectacular little moth, but they're a, a lot smaller than you get uh, think from this photo. And once I got my eye in for them, I started seeing them around quite a lot. In flight, they have a sort of orangish note. You just see this little fluttery orange thing, and they tend to fly out when disturbed when you walk in, and then will dive down in the vegetation. And normally, they they land on the underside of a leaf. And here, I had to twist the um, and over to photograph them 
I saw um, when I was doing an adder survey with one of the other volunteers, we saw a courtship between what seemed to be two males and a female. And uh, I managed to get these, this photograph of them mating. This might be the only photograph of mating purple border gold in existence because I've um, Googled them and searched the internet and I can't find any other photos of them. And I also um, unraveled a bit of the mystery about them. All, all, the, um, all the British moth guides say that their um, larval food plant is um, uh, marsankafoil. And basically, there isn't any moss ankle foil on any of the mosses. I think there's the odd plant. So no one knew really what they what they were feeding on. And then I found uh, a, a German reference um, to them um, using um, what uh, cranberry uh, uh, and other things uh, uh, as larval food plants. And now I've discovered in the cranberry beds and where you've got a lot of cranberry, this is the place where you see most of them. So they appear to be using cranberry. I've not found any caterpillars yet. So, um, so that's a research project for someone to do. So um, now, um, <laughs> I did notice that Ian Wallace was here. So he definitely knows what that is. And I'll, <laughs> I'll probably pronounce it Haganella clafrata. This was one um, Pete Boardman caught on his um, an invertebrate course he did several years ago. Now I have seen and recorded some of myself, um, mainly in June, but I have seen them in July as well. Um, I haven't put the photograph of one I caught in July here, but these are a particular um, rare species only occurring on a few sites in the country. And they're one of the few species that are, are rare across Europe as well. Um, I know when I looked to, uh, Ian, Ian Wallace's paper on them actually for, for bug life um, saying that the it's only sort just into double figures um, of sites that are occurring on Germany, Sweden and that. So I think it's only in Russia that the you know there's the more, more sites for them. And in June, for some reason, we get very early emergencies of um, emerald damselflies. Um, so you see the, the, this tenoral one here, and they have this particular green look when they, they first come out. And I find this species um, changes colour more than any other species. Um, you know, it, it catches a lot of people out because they look completely different. But um, funny enough, we get um, about mid-June, they start emerging. And it's unusually early because um, the they had the earliest ever record for the UK last year. One of the other volunteers, well, actually, she's um, an NNR worker who volunteers by doing a, a, a butterfly and dragonfly transect. She had one, which was the first earliest ever record in the UK. Um, and then black darters are another, um, what's it, uh, high summer species that tend to come out early on the moss in June. I mean, the, these persist through till October, um, but they first start emerging in June, but, you know, maximum numbers are probably in, in August and September. These end up being the, um, the most numerous um, Odin Arten you'll find on the moss. They're um, really large numbers. I think on one of the transects, we had 360 on the transect one day. So they do occur um, in quite large numbers. They're also Britain's smallest dragonfly. Um, this is an interesting species, Strotrix fusca. This is a male. It was caught in a light trap. Unfortunately, I think it was expiring, hence the, <laughs> the, the wilting um, antennae. Um, the, the females are, are flightless. According to jo uh, Dr. George Tordoff of the uh, Butterfly Conservation, it was the only site in the country for some time when they were being, they have been recorded on other sites, but um, they, um, the females are, are wingless. Um, apparently, I've been told they only uh, live about a day, the males do. But um, they're psychidae that you know the group sort of bagworms and things and the the um, larvae have this um, carry this case it's a bit like a caddis case around with them and when they go to pupate they just attach it to a tree or here's a plasticized wood 
post and you see them on benches and all sorts of things like this and on leaves and they just attach it there and then they um, exit the um, um, the case at the base you'll find a small hole there if you find a bigger hole later of the hand of parasitoid um, so it's I mean, there's a lot more happening in, in, in June than, 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 than what I've covered, um, but it's a bit difficult to give an overview of everything. Um, in July, um, this, this is a bit of a transition period because the sort of uh, um, early, late summer species that tend to be going over then, um, and you get new species coming out. This is um, Manchester Treble Bar. It's another nationally scarce moth. Um, I found something interesting about this moth as well, because um, I found if you go at first light, you see lots of the males patrolling around. This is areas with cranberry, and they fly round and round and round these areas. But you have to be very early in the morning, sort of, I think it's about just after half four, it gets light, quarter to five, um, through till about... Um, six o'clock and, and they're, they're flying everywhere and I was quite surprised the numbers they're in because um, people that have been uh, tra trapping for them like George Todoff have only had the odd individual um, and what it seems to be is they're confined to these boggy bits off the um, off the moss um, off the paths we, um, so people are as you put the light traps on the path and you only get the odd one um, crossing here but if, if you look around the areas where you've got a, a large amount of cranberry you'll see lots of them typical of male moss and the endlessly patrolling around looking for females um, and also this is when <laughs> the, the insects that find us come out the tabernids um, there are several species of deer fly this is um, chrysops uh, viduatus um, uh, male and female. There are the twin lobed, um, is it relictus? Um, and there are quite a lot of tabinids that um, emerge um, then. I'm, I'm not particularly good with them, mainly because I'm, I'm too busy knocking them away from me. But um, it's uh, there are not many sites with more tabinids, <laughs> both in numbers and, and uh, a range of species as well. Um, and of course, our old friend, what's in not on Clegg fly, which is uh, uh, equal to um, what's it, um, the deer flies in um, how predatory they are. They, they tend to follow you around. And when you, the moment you stop walking around, they pounce on you. And uh, I found even if you cover yourself in insect repellent, they always manage to get you somewhere. They'll bite you through your clothing or, or something. Um, uh, I had not seen this species before, this red-breasted carrion beetle, um, and then suddenly this year I found several of them. I didn't find any dead things around that they appeared to be feeding on, but um, I'd not noticed them before. I, um, they're, they're not a species I remember seeing before. In, in fact, um, when I looked up, I think this, these were the first records on the moss, um, and the, the other records were further south in Shropshire. And the, uh, well, um, this is in July, this is when you tend to find the, the female rat spiders with egg sacs. So um, from what I've observed, the, the, the females tend to mainly be on the wards. It's something to do with courtship. And when, the, when they develop these sort of um, aniseed ball sized, um, uh, egg sacs, which you know, when um, they lay their eggs in them and carry them around. I have read, although I've not seen them, that they dip them in the water um, several times a day. And I do tend to find them, you tend to find them in the vegetation, in the margins around the pools. Um, but obviously, when you've got these egg sacs, they're not actually on the water anymore. And you can see that the, their abdomen, that great big swollen abdomen before, is now quite shrunk and compared to what it was before. Um, this is um, a, a rat spider um, uh, nursery web. Um, unfortunately, it's a bit hidden behind the things, but 
that they're different than the nursery web spiders, which have a, a, a densely uh, woven uh, nursery web. They, they tend to just be sort of um, a thinner thing and the, the, the silk is used more to squash the vegetation around and just forms a light web around it. There are spiderlings here, you can just see um, some there, um, but most of them are hidden behind. Uh, them. And you, you tend to find these around the edges of pools. Um, I've never found them far, far away from the pools, and they are quite close. And so in July, you'll start seeing them from, from the, um, the, both the um, grass spiders with egg sacs and uh, these. And later in July, um, the, the old railway line, um, which, which crosses the moss, um, it has a bit of a different sort of vegetation because um, uh, the limestone that's spread along it means you get a more sort of lime loving plants and there's uh, knapweed all along Nifflewort and St John's wort um, and there's, there's a lot of flowers on there which there isn't on most of the moss at the, so it's quite good for lots of butterflies, pollinators um, all along there and um, you do get these along these these uh, i don't know if people have seen these giant tacking advice um tacking grossa these are a gigantic fly you have to see them to believe them um you can see a normal sized ditron sort of in the front just to give some idea of how huge they are i mean they're um the size of a medium-sized bumblebee you know quite amazing once you once you get used to where to see them you'll start finding them quite regularly uh, I believe they're parasitoids on um, moth, caterpillar, stuff, stuff like oak eggers, northern eggers, um, probably fox moths. Um, but there's certainly a lot around. And the, the, the most numerous caterpillar, big heavy caterpillars you see are fox moths. And um, this is an Essex skipper um, I got. It's, the, the photo's a bit fuzzy, but I was focusing on the tip of the antennae here. And this was the, the first ever um, Essex skipper recorded in the whole of North Wales. Um, um, I don't know if anyone's more expert than me, but, but um, the county recorder was quite happy, you know, that, um, that they've got the little gap there on, underneath the antenna that it was a, an Essex skipper. It's not too surprising. They were found on, on Preceve Common Reserve, the butterfly conservation thing there years ago and they they do seem to be spreading spreading north but um i've not managed to get a better photograph of one yet um this is around the um the old railway line area i used to share a butterfly dragonfly transect there with um mike sokolowski who's now an nnr worker but i've taken over one on the wixel side now it's from estelle Hughes. um She'd been doing that for about 27 years. Um, and this is another thing I um, discovered on the mosque, a keeled skimmer. The, the county recorder um, contacted me in um, a few, some years back and uh, asked me if I'd look out for them because she had a record from someone with a photograph of a female. And she wanted to know if there was a population or if it was just um, a, a vagrant. But I did, I was pretty sure I'd seen them a few times, you know, a blue dragonfly without a black tip on the end. Um, but the problem is that the moss is a very difficult place to follow things because the tracks are dry, but if you go off the edge, you soon get in <laughs> across the moss. You, you soon get into difficulties. And they have the, this habit of they fly up and then fly over the moss and you can't follow them. Anyway, luckily, um, the other year, I managed to get this good photograph of one, which confirmed that I had been seeing them um, quite a bit. So this was, um, it was quite an interesting uh, discovery. It took about four years before I got the photograph. <laughs> and then um, this just gives an, an illustration of how much, um, what's it, emerald damselflies change, where the, um, the males get this blue pruny essence on them. Um, 
and it develops and they, they develop these very blue eyes as well. And they look quite different than they do initially. Um, and, um, oh, you can't see these properly. Um, these are, um, I, sh I, sh I should have really done the PowerPoint things the other way around, <laughs> so they were on the left-hand side. Um, this is an Ardent and Sable uh, moth caterpillar. I went round with George Tordoff this year and some other people and Rhonda Goddard, a butterfly conservation, doing a survey for me. He does a survey each year to, to assess them. They have a particular way of rolling the leaf over and, and then um, gluing it together with silk. You can see it here. Um, Tony Jakes, the um, Shropshire County recorder, is incredibly good at spotting them. You'll see them 20, 30 foot away and say, oh, look, there's one. Um, and you can see what the caterpillars are like up here. Um, elsewhere, they actually use bog myrtle, but um, basically there isn't any on fens and wixel moss. There is on um, wen moss. It's a bit of a mystery why um, it's, it's all disappeared on fens and wixel moss. But all the argent and sable um, there use birch. They tend to use small, low, shrubby birch um, for that. So... Uh, and this is one of the um, the uh, what's it um, grass moss that uh, uh, that you see around. This is the pearl band um, what's it um, grass veneer moth. Um, the, these are a specialist of uh, boggy habitats. Actually, th this one's upside down. They tend to, to sit upside down. So I flipped the photograph. I thought it's <laughs> it's just a, a bit easier to look at than than, than twisting your head around. Um, and on the old railway line, you get lots of these bee grabbers, thick-headed flies, conopid flies, um, you know, these um, uh, Sicus pharyngeus. Um, you do get a, a few other species. I've never seen a site where there's so many of them. So, so I suppose it, is, it must mean there's a lot of bees, but they, um, they're parasitoids of bees. They grab them in flight, and the female injects uh, an egg under one of the abdominal um, segments on the side of them. And you do see an, an incredible amount of them. Um, there's quite a lot of um, tachinid flies. Um, this one was identified for me. Uh, I assume it's the vulpi means it has some sort of a fox-like appearance. This was feeding on the um, uh, common hogweed. Um, you do get the, in in um, in July. This is where the, the high summer species tend to start emerging. Um, you get the uh, it's, it's, um, the hawker dragonflies like Asian um, junk here. This is um, a female. Um, you can see the, the, the very short, small anti urinal stripes here, which are a good indication of what it is, and the yellow costa on the front of the wing that um, separates it from the uh, what's it, um, southern hawkers. And they can look quite similar, but the, um, the females of these tend to have more of a khaki green yellow, and it's more of a sort of day glow green, um, and the um, southern hawkers have. Common hawkers, it's, it's rather a funny name for them because they're not very common. They're a sort of, you know, bog or moor specialist. They like acidic water, so they're not very common at all. Um, so you won't find many in Cheshire, for instance. Um, and, and then we're moving into August. This is, you know, proper high summer thing. This is another one of those bee grabbers here. The... Um, <coughs> um, Sicus pharyngus, um, and so in it's, it's this. This is the peak month for for, for black darters. This is a male. As I say, uh, the old railway line um, in August because of the um, uh, it's, it's both sheltered from the wind and it, it is um, and there's a lot of um, uh, forage for for pollinators along there from the knapweed, which is in flower there, quite the huge amounts of it um, so this is um, a, the male common hawker dragonfly um, again you can see the quite thin they are bigger than the female but they're quite thin the, the southern hawks have this big broad thing 
and also the blue all along, um, but quite a pale blue compared to the um, Southern Hawkers. Uh, but again, the bright yellow costa on them separates them from um, Southern Hawkers. And this is a mating pair here. Um, Interestingly, there was a paper the other year, and I, I've observed this pay, um, behavior, and this is the, about the females, if they don't want to mate with a male, they, um, I haven't got the photo here, they dive into the vegetation, just drop out of the air. Um, and actually, that, that, that's what happened with, with this, um, what's well, a couple, but the male must have been quite persuasive. <laughs> And in August, the, the latest dragonfly species to emerge, migrant hawkers, starts um, emerging. Um, I, I got the first Cheshire record back in 1993 on Sound Common. Because um, it's funny, if you go back in, into the 1980s, all, all, um, these were all south of Birmingham. There wasn't any... Um, um, for further north, and now they spread right up to Scotland. Obviously, it's um, a climate change phenomena because there's quite a lot of dragonflies that rapidly ex um, expanded their range. Um, that's a, a, a male migrant hawker. There's, anyone familiar with them, they're smaller than the other hawkers, and that's one of the first things you recognize when you see them. That's, that's the male um, um, southern hawker. You'll notice on it the um, big broad stripes on it there. Um, and also the, there's no yellow costa at the front of the wing. Um, this year I got the, um, the first record for a small red-eyed damselfly, but they're, they're one of these species that have been um, spreading throughout the country. I think they were only first recorded in Britain, I forgot when, it was, it's about 2004 was it or something I, I think and then they've been spreading rapidly across the country but there wasn't a record um for structure at all until 2019 um and then this this year just gone 2020 i got this um female one on, on the um on the moss but it was only one one individual and I just I spotted it uh, it didn't seem right compared to the other one so I got some photos and uh, it was the first one recorded in Shropshire this year and then they got a few more afterwards on on waters in the south where they'd been recorded last year um one of the main species you'll see along the old railway line in the um uh, in August on uh, um, our brimstones um, and this is the second generation you get which uh, these are the ones that will overwinter and they're, they're quite large numbers at times um, and then speckled woods um, the, the, these are one of the species that, that spread north because um, I used to live in Lancashire for some time and um, the, the these only appeared there, I think, about about thirty odd years ago or something. Um, and you get lots of elephant hawk moth caterpillars. Uh, see them regularly. And this is on Ro Rose Bay willow herb, which tends to be the main plant. You get them on bed straws as well. There's a gatekeeper butterflies. There's a, a footman moth there. I think that's. Um, is it, oh, Pale Whatman. Both. And you get quite a few common blue butterflies on the um, the old railway line. That's mainly because um, uh, there's a lot of bird's foot trefoil along there, which is the larval food plant. Lot, lots of large whites, small whites, green vein whites, <laughs> and peacock butterflies, commas. And this is, um, I think it's a uh, scarce footman, this is. Although I know there is a bit of a controversy about whether this is actually a separate species from northern footman. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to uh, get too involved in that. Uh, just, uh, it's, it's a bit confusing. People, different authorities seem to have different opinions on it. So. 
This is um, a leaf cutter, but you, you get quite a lot on the old railway line. Um, I'm not sure the actual species, it's a mega child species. Um, someone did say what, which one this probably was, but the bees aren't, aren't really my, um, my, <laughs> my especially subject. And this is one of the um, um, Aristalis nemorana. Um, um, th th these are one of the classic ones that tend to hover over each other. You often see a female with two or three males hovering above her. Um, now, this is um, the, also the time of the year in August when you start finding the juvenile brass spiders. Well, you will find them on, on the water. Actually, most of them you find tend to be on leaves, right? If you look around on bramble leaves, um, birch leaves and, and bracken, you'll find these quite, uh, you know, uh, compared to other spiders, they're, they're, they're not that small, but compared to the um, adult rat spiders, they are. And um, the interesting thing I found out from photographing them is you tend to get them on this, they tend to have this silk platform. Now, I, I'd assume this was known about, and I asked Helen Smith about it, and she didn't know anything about it. And she seems to think it's only Fimbriatus. She's had some of the photographs on me, uh, off me, um, and I think she's gonna be using them in an, an article. I'm not sure if it's appeared in British Wildlife or not, because I, I don't get it. But, um, she was quite interested in this because lots of the photographs show this silk platform and no one seems to know anything about it. Um, so it's quite consistent. This this one hadn't got one because it caught this hoverfly here. Um, and you still get the females around with egg sacs in August. Um, so um, it's sort of late June till August, you tend to see the female uh, brass spiders with egg sacs. Um, and one thing I discovered about them, often when you find one, you find several. So you'll often find up to f five females with egg sacs. And so they have some sort of weird semi-communal sort of behavior. I don't know what this is about. Um, I assume it's because this is close to where they um, used to, were standing on the water before because where you find them are in patches where you found lots of large female rat spiders um, on the open water before. Um, this is a, a, a rat spider uh, nursery web here. Again, you can see compared to, to the um, normal nursery web fiber where it's quite dense there, the silk is it's more like a sock. Here, you can just see these very fine threads. And this nursery web is more, it's, it's holding the vegetation together. This one, you can see it's got lots of spiderlings in it. The female rat spiders will tend to sort of hang around this, the, the nursery web sort of guard in them. And um, this, I mentioned this at the beginning. So here the Tani of Trichos gets a, a mention here. This is um, uh, Citicus floricola or floricola as, uh, as uh, Richard Gallant says. I can never get any tongue around that. But um, one of my roles when um, Richard was doing the spider surveys was to guide him round. He told me what sort of habitat um, he was looking for. Um, and I sort of told him where there were bits of that habitat were but um um while uh, he spent two years looking for them and he even found uh, a new species um for the moth Citicus carisis uh, which he thought was Citicus floricula at first but he didn't get them and i believe ian wallace got one on bettersfield in 1998 um that was the less definite record that um British Arachnological Society seem to have some other records from early 2000s. I'm not sure how reliable this was. But um, we, um, and anyway, after two years and seven visits, I went round, there was Rich Birkmar there and um, uh, another volunteer. And um, we went round and eventually they, they found one. And um, 
I remember Richard Gallon was quite ec ecstatic when he found it, and um, I said, "Can I take a photograph?" So I, I just put um, used a, a white plastic beaker and put some sphagnum moss on there. And he said to me, "He said if you lose that, I'm not going to be your friend after." So I managed to get these uh, photographs. Luckily, they found um, a, a number of others. Basically, the sites that were looking um, had to be quite wet, even though this is 2018, um, where it was that very dry, hot summer. We found one area, the most, well, a few areas, where it was really wet and you could bounce on the top, almost like a, a string or sort of forming. And this is where they, they were. Um, so they quite um, got quite particular sort of requirements for their habitat. Um, So we're moving into September now, and um, it's a bit right. I mean, most of the months, it's it's not everything ends at the beginning of one month and starts at the beginning of another, and it's a sort of a, a transition month. We go into it, and it's more like August, and when we come out of it, we tend to be sort of moving into autumn. Um, there's, obviously, this is um, a small copper butterfly. There's lots of um, sheep sorrel on, on, on the um, access tracks, and that's the larval food plant of these. Um, it's a good time, September, for actually getting good views of um, the hawker dragonflies because they tend to do a lot of sitting on trees and basking, whereas in July and August, they're extremely active and just fly around endlessly. Uh, so you'll see a lot more resting ones in um, September. This is a, uh, a male, and this is a male southern hawker. So, I mean, September, it's a good time for, for seeing the hawker dragonflies, and then you've got also large amounts of black darters. These, as I say, are one of the most numerous dragonflies on the moss, and it's a female. Common data. That's the um, female um, common data here. And then there are not, uh, the, once the heather's gone over, which is sort of at the, the beginning of September, there's, there's not much for um, forage for, for butterflies. So they have to resort to, to eating soft fruit, you know, um, well, I mean, Get, getting the juice out of it. It's a sort of nectar substitute. Um, and so you get um, on brambles around the edge, you, you, you tend to get um, nymphal butterflies like um, commas and, and red admirals. And then you get either, there is some bits of um, heather left. And um, th this was taken in um, September, but you get them all year down. This is the older leaf beetle, um, uh, uh, Agli, uh, what's it, um, Agli Lasta Ulnai. Um, and these all seem to be males from what I can see, but these suddenly turned up on the moss about three, was it four years ago? I've been looking for them before. Now, I found them on Sound Common and some other sites, but. Um, they're one of a, a peculiar thing, a bit of a mystery, because they thought they were extinct in the 1990s. And then suddenly they've started appearing on lots of sites all over the Northwest and then the North Midlands. And they're quite easy to spot because you just look for, you tend to find them on sort of lowish alder leaves. Um, I assume this is because the, the, the beetles pupate in the ground and they they climb up and they start feeding on the first ones. The females, are like Gastrophyta brilligula, have, you know, the green dot beetle have this huge swollen abdomen with yellow sides on them. But there's a similar colour. They're a, a bit bigger Chrysomella beetle than the dot beetle. Um, but um, then suddenly the population's built up and they're all over the moss now, so they're, they're quite frequent now. And this, oh dear, <laughs> the, the, these are hidden under the, and, um, this is Citicus carasis. Um, at first, when I, I took round um, Richard Gallon, the first survey, he said, oh, got it. Um, the, he thought it was um, Citicus floricola. 
And um, but when when he had a look on the microscope when he got back, he said, "No, it's carasis." And yet this is this was a, a more significant um, discovery. You know, the, the NNR staff were quite disappointed. Actually, it turned out to be this, but. Um, these, these have got a mainly southern distribution, and the only place in the whole of the um, Midlands and the north where they've been recorded in Wales was um, it was a record from about 110 years ago in Litchfield, was the site in the northern Pennines in Cumbria, where I think they've been found. And Richard Gallon did find three sites in um, in Anglesey, but they've never been recorded before this on, on mainland Wales. Um, because about two thirds of Fens and Wixel moss is in Wales and about a third of it's in England. Um, so he found quite a lot of them. So this is the only site in, in, in still known in, uh, in the whole of uh, Wales, uh, mainland Wales. And um, apart from Cumbria, it's the only site from the, you know, in the whole of the Midlands and north of England, except this um, site in the Pennines. And there's, while there are more south, sites in the south, I don't think it's a particular widespread species. So it's a bit of a mystery why um, you, there's so many of them on, on Fence and Wixel. Um, and then we're coming up to the end of the year now. Um, October. Um, when you go into October, there's still lots of um, what, uh, data dragonflies, and you still see quite a few hawker dragonflies around. Again, it depends on what sort of um, summer it is um, uh, and the wind, uh, the weather in October. Um, but they are quite numerous when you go in there. Um, you see a few butterflies, not so many. Um, you see lots of uh, dipterans basking on the edge of um, uh, trees and the things when the sun's out you know mainly noon flies and it's a female common hawker i've recorded those up to uh, late october but i've never had one in in november yet and it's a migrant hawker they they, they also persist well into um october but i've never seen them past october and then we're coming up to to november here and um, this really is sort of the end of the year because you you do get a few dragonflies around, only darters though. I've only ever recorded black darters and um, common darters. The latest one I've ever had is the 20th of November. So you basically got what, what you had around in, in October, but a lot less of it. <laughs> um, and really an in, invisible in dragonfly, uh, invertebrates, uh, you know, you're not seeing um, so much around. And by the time you come out of November, you're really into into winter proper. And there's, um, so the only invertebrates you've got are uh, ones in the larval stage or the small ones like springtails, um, the, the small money spiders and that in the surface of, of the moss. Um, um, th this is a female um, um, common hawker. Now, I do realise I've, I've missed out quite a lot here <laughs> because, I mean, I've, I haven't mentioned, and I, I forgot to put green tiger beetles in and um, the, these are one of the um, sort of more uh, noticeable species you see around. And obviously I haven't had time to... Um, cover lots of the other species there are. I mean, I haven't covered moth trapping either, because <laughs> um, what's the time? There, um, there, um, uh, there's some quite significant um, moth species, the night flying species like silvery arches and that, um, which don't tend to occur in many other species in the country. 